Hey, welcome to Underlord's Universe, where we discuss all kinds of stuff uh, related to hard rock, heavy metal, progressive rock, fantasy, horror, sci-fi, etc. We also write and record our own stuff. More on that at the uh, end of this little program. But uh, this is part three of a Van Halen uh, discography discussion. Um, I'll put the links to part one and part two in the description below in case you uh, anybody's interested in looking at that. Uh, part one, we focused on the original six albums with David Lee Roth, and part two, we focused on the other six. Uh, Brent and I came up with a uh, kind of a method uh, for rating albums that we think is a little different than other other folks out there. Um, basically, uh, we do a rating of each song on a five uh, five point scale, and then we divide by the total number of points possible for a, an overall percent divide by the number of tracks for an overall uh, star rating. Uh, not a perfect system. No system is perfect when you're trying to uh, rate or rank things or when you're trying to quantify the qualitative. But um, this is our culminating episode on the Van Halen albums. We, what we want to do is we want to see uh, where the, the, the two rankings uh, of part one and part two kind of blend together. Uh, so how, what we're going to do here is we're simply going to go from our number 12 down to our number one then we're going to have an overall discussion about the discography about our system uh and wrap things up is that right brent that's it <clears throat> that appears to be it okay so uh our van halen uh rankings which i think it's safe to say this van halen has long been uh one of our favorite both your one of your favorite bands one of my favorite bands um and i like all these albums even their worst album, in my opinion, has some 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 quality stuff on it. So, uh, but there's some weird surprises here. Okay. Oh yeah, lots lots of surprises. Yeah. And I, I would say before we do this, one of the the reasons why Brent and I came up with this rating system is because um, we wanted to surprise ourselves, if if it, if if at all possible. Um, and I can tell you, there are there are albums the, the order of these albums is not the the way i would have just put it out if i if you had asked me what how would you rate the albums by doing the system that we devised we created some surprises for ourselves so at any rate so. you ready to go all right i'm ready to go let's do, okay. it. Let's do number it number 12 number 12 van halen three for both of us 11 Balance for both of us. Ten? Ten. Uh. Uh, women and children first for me, fifty one fifty for you. I can I can hear Van Halen fans, if they're bothering to watch this, just groaning at that point. Okay. Of course. Nine. Nine. Diver down for me. Women and children first for you. Eight. Fifty-one fifty for me. Different kind of truth. For you. Seven. Seven. For unlawful carnal knowledge for me. Fair warning, Fair warning for you. Numeral six. 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 Oh, you eight one two, and then dive down for you. Yeah, they're under the top five. Five. Fair warning for me. Oh, you eight one two for you. Four. Four. Different kind of truth. For lawful carnal knowledge. Three. Debut. Excuse me, 1984 for me and Van Halen 1 for you. Yep. Number 2 for me, Van Halen 1, and for you, Van Halen 2. And then that yep. makes number 1 for me, Van Halen 2, and for you, 1984. Okay, right. so we had some surprises in here. Um, I can tell you that some albums actually rated lower for me even though i would probably pull them out and listen to them 
more than I would some others. For example, um, I was surprised that Women and Children First rated as low as it did. Um, I would definitely pick that up and listen to that before I'd listen to 5150, but 5150 outranked it. Um, I mean, what's have that happened to you, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. I would have picked um, probably Fair Warning to be my number one album. It came in at number seven. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I would, I, I, my, it was five for me, and uh, I agree. I would not have picked From Lawful Carnal Knowledge to be number four or OU812 to be number five. Those were surprises. And A Different Kind of Truth actually came in at eight for me, which was a little bit lower than I thought. Um, mm. Three being number 12 was not really a surprise. We've talked about that album. Yep. Uh, before and, and it's it's you know arguably is the weakest of the 12 even yeah. though it's got some good material on it but there but there were some surprises in there for sure i didn't think 1984 was going to come in at number one yeah um for me uh even though i love 1984 and it's hugely nostalgic because it's my first it's my the first van halen album i ever owned and um but i wouldn't have thought of it as my favorite of the David Lee Roth there or, or, or the, in the top three, even of my David Lee Roth era. Um, but it, it did, it came in and number one was Van Halen two. Uh, I would have guessed either fair warning or Van Halen one would have been my, my tops. But I think that this speaks to our system a little bit because um, you know, we're trying to put a quality, excuse me, a quantitative value on something that's qualitative. And it's mm -hmm. not taking into consideration things like nostalgia. Um, it's not taking into consideration things like uh, the production quality. Like, for example, I think that 5150 and OU812 are uh, kind of lacking in terms of the sound quality, the production. I think uh, Eddie's guitars lose some some of the bite in, in, in them. And I just... Even though I think 5150 is a, a, a great album. I mean, I love all these albums. You know, they're, they're Van Halen records that you can't go wrong with any of them. Um, but right. I would say, well, yeah, 5150, that's probably one that I don't go to very often at all. But it, it ended up, you know, kind of in the, in the middle of the pack. Um, so our system kind of makes you kind of reevaluate the songs as they relate to the album as a whole. And I think and that's, that's, the key. that's the key. That's the key, Brian. The album as a whole, because we're revisiting the whole albums and we're hearing things again for the first time, maybe in years. Um, and, I think that's, and getting a new appreciation for some of the some of the material. Yeah, and I think that's actually the point because it, um, it's not as if we just pulled out the albums and just gave the songs a score. We actually re-listened to them. It was a it was a re it's a re-listening exercise um that's what we that's what we're kind of aiming for and you know when some of this is a little bit like splitting hairs because um a five to me a song that's a five is always going to be a five but you know on any given day like well maybe maybe i gave a song a 3.5 and maybe six months from now if i listen to it i might give it a four you know and those things when you're talking about albums that are separated by you know a point here or there uh, that can that can make all the difference um but you know when you, you watch some other people rate albums you kind of wonder well what's the criteria that they use to to rate their albums and and whatever they choose to use is totally fine we're not knocking anybody's we just wanted to come up with something that was a little bit different um for me i can say like women and children first um i think is i mean it's it's how do you go wrong with songs like uh, everybody wants summer fools or uh, my favorite on the album is Romeo the light but at the same time Tora Tora and loss of control are are th mm. that's those are two um gotta get my glasses on because I'm old that's two out of nine songs two out of nine tracks and Tora Tora and hey. loss of control are almost throwaways and it's like well now you now you're bringing the album down to almost like almost like an EP length thing and you know, take your whiskey home. Could this be magic in a simple rhyme? I mean, those are great songs, but I think that when you when you have Tortora and Loss of Control, it just kind of brings the overall value down when you only have nine songs to start with. Um, yep. So I think that's the, an example of 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 our of our system. So, um, but 
you know, in the other two episodes, we kind of talked about each album spe- uh, more specifically. Um, do you have any any, any other uh, kind of overall thoughts that you wanted to add in here before? We- uh, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you a question. So mm-hmm. you're, you know, we we take the, the scores and we kind of convert it into a percentage in addition to you know uh, allocating it a uh, number of points. Yeah. So if what was your how many, what percentage was your number one and compare that with your number 12? Let's, I was just kind of curious as to how uh, the gap between number one and number 12 well, was for a, you. That's a good question. You know, let me pull up my notes there online. Let me let me go to my other computer here. Because a lot of these um, albums, are they're, they're only separated by 1%, 2%. It's very close. So like a yeah. song here, a song there could change uh, the rankings quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to your question, the uh, and you said you know we both agreed the Van Halen uh, three was the least, and I think that's pretty much universal amongst the fan base. Um, and of course, you yeah, get so. you get a lot of people that are you know more Dave fans than Sammy fans. I I, I am an equal opportunity Van Halen fan. Um, I I might go to the earlier stuff more often. Um, yeah, you know, but when I when I when I do put on an album like Oh You Wait One Two, which rated higher than I expected, it's like it, there's some seriously you know high quality stuff on that album. You know, Mine All Mine is great. Feels So Good is great. Um, you know, Source of Infection I think arguably has the best Sammy Hagar vocal ever done, and uh, I, I just absolutely love that song. The, the verses are kind of silly, yeah. but, you know. Okay, so you uh, the the percentages. The highest yeah. and lowest. Okay, my high and my lowest yeah. percent, Van Halen 3 came in at 64.16%. So 64.2%. And okay. uh, what was your lowest? Uh, Van Halen 3 came in at 59.17%. So lower than so I were off by but yeah. Um, what was your high? What was the percent? Uh, you said 1984 was your, your, um, yep, your, I, your number one. What did that yeah. come in at? percent wise 88.89 percent so just a shade under 90 percent wow quite a bit higher than i rated i rated it at 81 by round at 81 percent um in mm-hmm. fact you 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 rated 1984 your number one that is a higher percent than my number one which is van halen two um i rated van halen two at 86 percent so and I rated Van Halen to eighty three, and that was my number two. So we're really yeah. close on a lot of these. Close. Yeah, yeah. I think what's interesting is that there's actually there's a smaller gap between my between my lowest Van Halen three at sixty four percent and my highest Van Halen two at eighty six percent. There's a smaller gap between those two than yours. You're, mm-hmm. You actually have a wider gap in there. Your mm-hmm. highest is higher. Your lowest is lower. Um, I, I, on the whole, does that mean that I like Van Halen's catalog a little bit more consistently than you? Maybe. Maybe that's what that means. Maybe. Uh, does it mean that you like 1984 more than I do? Well, you rated it higher based on an objective analysis, which is a five-star song is a song that even when you're not in the mood for it, when you hear it, it it hits. It's You're there. You're on board 100%. A four is like it's often there, but sometimes you're gonna kind of gotta be in the mood for it. A three is like, yeah, it's a solid song. I don't mind it. I really wouldn't skip it. A two is there's things about it that I'm not really a fan of. I don't really like certain parts of it. A one is I just don't really like the song at all, at, at all. It's that nothing about it is worthwhile. And a zero is this song shouldn't even exist. It sucks that bad. So, you know, we're both kind of using as close as we can a similar approach you know because if i were to say you know you you gave uh on van halen three you gave how many say i a zero right i gave it a zero okay i I didn't i gave it a two okay so does that mean i like the song more than you yeah that's exactly what it means right okay if i if i give a song uh, a five and if you give a song a three clearly that means i'm that song impacts more punch for me 
uh, yep. than, than for you. So, you know, maybe I just kind of like the Van Halen catalog on the whole a little bit more than you, but you, for you, there's even higher peaks and lower valleys. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very distinct possibility. And that is why we chose to do this system. Not that the system's perfect, but we wanted to have some sort of takeaway beyond just, Oh, how did you rate the album? How did you rate the album? And, yeah, yeah, and again, we're you know we're music fans, like Brian said. You know, we write and record our own music, and we've been doing that for a very long time. But we're also big fans of a lot of different genres of music, and this is a great doing. This is a great way to just revisit the songs, the albums, the bands that we grew up listening to. I mean, we've been listening to all these bands for forty years or whatever, however long it's been, or longer. So I'm, it, it's I'm only fun to that. excuse me, I'm twenty eight. And I will always be 28. That is that is an established fact. That's just the way it is. Okay. So, but you would agree. You would agree that that's that's a great uh, part of doing this. It's just a chance to dig back in and, and really listen to stuff that yep. you know. I don't pull out. I don't pull out 1984 every day. I, I don't listen to it maybe even once a year. Nope. But you know, we uh, when we do this, we actually sit down and really, really listen to the songs and you know, jot down some notes and make the grades and kind of put everything together and see where it falls. And it's, 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 uh, it's a lot of fun. So let's do this to, to, to wrap this up before we plug some of our own stuff shamelessly um, going from again, from 12 down to one, let's do best worst. Okay. okay. So right. um, now This will be easy be for the first two because we have, uh, um, you know, a similarity here. So um, with Van Halen 3, what would you say is the best song and worst song? You could only pick one, even if there's a tie. What best song? Um, worst okay. Song? Okay. Best song is Fire in the Hole and worst song is How Many Say I. Okay. I, I might yep. agree with, I might agree with that, but um, I'm, I'm actually a pretty big fan of From Afar. I'm yeah. a fan of Without You. It's hard for me to, on the on the best uh, once. Um, so, yeah, but it's 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 really difficult. But I'm gonna say how how many say I is the worst song on the album. Um, today I'm gonna say From Afar. Ask oh, me tomorrow. Yeah. Ask me tomorrow. I might I might say something different. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, balance. Best song. Worst song. <laughs> Um, uh, for, well, I'll say Seven Seals the best song, and uh, I don't even really consider Strung Out to be a song. I gave it a zero, so I will say that's the worst. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll agree. Strung Out is the worst. Um, I also agree. Seven Seal is is uh, arguably the best. Uh, I also rated Not Enough as uh, equal um to Seventh Seal, so I'm gonna go with Not Enough. Uh, I, I think that's one of the best ballads that they've ever done. So, okay, here we're going a little different. Um, so, uh, my my number uh, um, ten was "Women and Children First. Uh, for me, um, the best song is "Romeo Delight" and "Loss of Controls." Silly. So, how about you for? Um... Oh, for. Um... For 19, or excuse me, for uh, 5150? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, the worst song is Inside. I just don't, I don't like that song. I really never have. It's, uh, it, 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 it's for, hands down for me the weakest track on this record. Um, for best song, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Best of Both Worlds. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, number nine. Diver down for me, um, you know. Uh, the full bug might be the best song on the record, but at the same time, "Hang 'Em High" uh, is just cool. So today, I'm going to say "Hang 'Em High" is my favorite on this record. Um, and "Intruders" cool but it's really just an intro to oh pretty woman so i'm going to say intruder for the for the weakest track uh on diver down and uh what was your 
Your number nine? Okay, my, mine is women and children first. So the yeah. weakest track I'm going to say is loss of control. Yeah. Hands down by far. And then my favorite track is probably going to be Everybody Wants Some. Mm. Mm-hmm. If that are fools, I'm going to go with Everybody Wants Some. I love them both, but uh, I'll go with Everybody Wants Some. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Number eight for me was 5150. I'm going to agree with you that uh, Inside, I think Inside's kind of a throwaway uh, track. Um, it may And it may be cliche, but I, I think I'm going to go with Dreams as the best song on the record. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, off different kind of truth, uh, tattoo. Uh, I, it's actually grown on me a little bit, but that I think that's hands down the weakest track on the record. Tattoo. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's tough picking a favorite because the, the really good songs in this record are so good. But um, I'm probably going to go with Big River. Ah, oh, yeah. That's my favorite. Okay. Really good track. Really good uh, yeah. song. It, great, great song. Um, it's a rework from one of their older demos. And uh, yeah, it's a great song. Um, you know, For Unlawful Colonel Knowledge was my number seven. And I, if you had asked me before, I would have said that this was my favorite Sammy Hera, uh, era, Sammy Hagar era album. But uh, but it's not, even though I, I do love it. I'm going to say my favorite song on the record is uh, The Dream Is Over. I think that one is one of the best songs they've ever done. Um and probably in and out is my least I, i'd say in and out is the, the the weakest song on the record well and, and uh mine mine was fair warning and okay. for me i'm going to say the the my least favorite song is so this is love mm-hmm. and it, it's hard to pick a favorite there's really a lot of really good songs in this record but i'm going to go with mean street okay that's just that's the bomb yep great song Okay. My number six was OU812, which surprised me. Uh, excuse me. I'm doing this. Uh... Skip one. I went out of order. My apologies. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. No, I didn't. I'm just counting wrong. I can't count. I don't... Uh... My math skills are not up to snuff. All right, so this is mine, and yours is... Uh... Mine was OU812. Okay. Yeah, That's number six, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, yeah, uh, to me, the, the weakest tracks are either Black and Blue or um, Cabo Wabo. I, I think that, that those two songs kind of bring down side one. Um, today, I'm going to pick Black and Blue as the, the weakest song on the record um and i'm gonna say source of infection is uh the best song on the record although i know it's sappy but when it's love is a great track but uh today i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with uh, source of infection all right um so i'm gonna say my least favorite on uh, diver down is big bad bill is sweet william now (laughs) yeah it's fun it's fun and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go with hang them high is my favorite track oh yeah okay all right um on fair warning which was my number five uh i'm gonna go with uh today today i think i'm gonna go with center swing as my favorite track on the record although it always competes with dirty movies um and push comes to shove those those three really fight it out but today i'm gonna say center swing um and you know it's really cool but it's a bit of a novelty piece sunday afternoon in the park yeah yeah no i agree yeah. i agree yeah good picks um so off mine uh which was oh you eight one two um i'm gonna say that uh i'll agree with brian and say that black and blue you know right now probably least favorite track um i'm gonna say feels so good is my favorite song on this record right okay. now. I forgot yeah. how good that song is. Great song. Great video. Great song. My number four was A Different Kind of Truth. And I'm going to say that the best song on the record, the song that I go to the most is um, The Trouble With Never. I absolutely love The Trouble With Never because when was the last time you did something for the first time? Good question. And the the, the weakest track is the first track, Tattoo. Easy. Okay, off this one. Um, uh, tilted a little bit. Can't, 
Oh, sorry. Oh, fern level garden there. knowledge. Yeah. Fern level. So um, it, it, it's probably a tie between In and Out and maybe Man on a Mission is the the, the, the songs that I don't like uh, the most. Mm-hmm. I'll pick In and Out. I'll pick In and Out. And then uh, as a favorite, I'm going to go with Top of the World. Go with that song. Yeah. And here's where it starts to really get tough for 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 weaker <laughs> tracks, but. Um, no, uh, album number three for me was 1984, and uh, you know, I I I, I love this album straight through. Um, the the opening 1984 itself is is really cool and atmospheric and very 1984. It's you know, it sounds like 1984. Top Jimmy is I you know Eddie's guitar playing is awesome. It's just awesome on Top Jimmy, but as a song it's probably my least favorite song on the record itself. So either that or, or, or the title track. Um, I'm going to have to go with Panama. It's just, yeah. there's just something about it. Something Can't go wrong with that pick. Nope. Um, so for me off this album, least favorite is Atomic Punk. Mm. And um what I'm going to say next might be a little contrarian, but I'm going to go with Feel Your Love Tonight as my favorite song uh-huh. on that. Okay. And and I'm that's my number two, Van Halen 2. And I'm going to say, you know, uh, you really got me. I mean, you really got me might. I might. I think I rated that about the same as Atomic Punk. So those two are kind of competing for the weakest. Uh, today, I'm going to say you really got me as the weakest. I, I yeah, because those two I rated the same. Um, and the best, On Fire. I, I think that I'm consistently likely to say On Fire is my favorite song on that record. Yeah, I ask me tomorrow and I might say the same thing. Yeah. That, that's that's a phenomenal song. Yep. Yeah. All right. And for your number one album and my number one album, we... Well, I think I do my number two first. Oh, you got to do your number two. That's all right. Go ahead. Yeah. So... My least favorite song on this album is the is the opening track. You're no good. Yeah. that song's no good, really. I mean, I think I give it two stars. Um, somebody get me a doctor. My favorite song in this record. All right. And for number one, I'm gonna make one adjustment. I agree with you. On fire. I'll take on fire. I'll take on fire and then fill your love tonight. I just made a change. Okay. My number one was Van Halen 2, and I'm going to say that the weakest track on the album, I agree with you, is You're No Good. Um, And then the uh, Out of Love Again. I just keep coming back to Out of Love Again as my favorite track on the record. Although, I mean, it's it's a pretty slamming record straight through. So it is. Okay. And your 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 weakest and strongest on 1984. I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with you. Uh, Top Jimmy. And then uh, I'm going to go with House of Pain right. as my favorite track of this cool. record. Um, and uh, never mind the demo versions of, uh, of House of Pain. I and mean, that's a whole other episode we could do on their demos. But sure okay. Is. Um, you know, we're not sponsored by anybody, but I'd like to point out that the Lemon Sorbet Bubbly, if you can see that. Refreshing. Refreshing. Spring water. <laughs> sparkling water. Very good um yeah okay so anyway that's a nice little discussion on the van halen catalog that over over three episodes with some slight variations on how we approached the episodes um as far as the underlords over the overworld go uh now we have been writing and recording music for a long time uh we actually try to do it as best as we can uh to make things sound as good as possible we actually play real instruments we don't sit around with uh, computer programs and just punch buttons. <clears throat> Nothing against that. It's just not the way we do things. Um, but we started off as an instrumental band because we couldn't find a singer. Had a hard time keeping a drummer, but we plowed forward and we recorded uh, a self-titled album with uh, uh, instrumental hard rock on it. Um, and when we were producing that record, our bass player, who also happens to be... Ugh! an author started writing a fictional backstory about the underlords of the overworld and he's published these great novels and it's 99.9% hooey hogwash but it's fun and 
and there's also these kind of fictional bands uh, a country band a folk artist a blues artist etc and we recorded a whole album of songs called hell comes in small packages songs from the underlords universe that represent these fictitious artists that appear in these stories um, we did that largely over the covid era because we weren't all in one room together we were doing different things some of us would come and go um the fourth volume kind of deals with the fact that we've had a hard time keeping the same drummer and we kind of travel we the band uh underlords of the overworld have to kind of traverse time and space to find uh a drummer and um we took some of the uh the, the main antagonists these four sorcerers and used them as a basis for more instrumental uh hard rock <clears throat> Um, so we think that those are kind of fun. Uh, it's also on Bandcamp. It's also on Spotify. We recently um, did uh, a couple of instrumental tracks with uh, uh, having uh, Derek Sherinian, formerly of Dream Theater, did some keyboards uh, on a couple of tracks for us. Those are right now available on Bandcamp. Uh, Waited There's a Demon in My Soup and Dirty Hands Make a Great Sandwich. Um Josh, our bass player, who writes under the name H. Prescott Lemon, also has an additional series in the Underlords universe called the OAO. It's kind of an occult uh, driven themed uh, experience. Kind of fun though. It's all it's all kind of in in good good nature, good fun. So if anybody's kind of interested in supporting. Uh, local artists, um, local creators, we totally appreciate it. Um, if nothing else, if you like, you know, listening to people blather on about rock music or uh, albums, movies, etc., you know, like our our uh, follow our uh, YouTube page, do the little bell thing, make some comments, tell us how crazy we are for rating the Van Halen albums the way we did. Um, if you're uh, thoroughly interested in our broader creative work you know there's links down below as well and uh i don't know brett anything else that you want to kind of add in on that no just we'll be back with another episode sometime soon we'll mm -hmm. be doing some more music we're going to be doing some book reviews we're going to be talking about movies it's gonna be a lot of fun yep. so uh, check it out all right until then uh if you were tuned in until now and haven't tuned us out thanks for uh thanks for watching yeah thanks all right toodles see you